This is a 2024 Kia EV9. And boy, does this thing look like it just came out of some sort of sci-fi movie. This particular one is the Wind All-Wheel Drive. Beautiful all around. You have these gorgeous taillights. An incredible, I'm going to call it, you know, the body style of this car. The rims are super futuristic. I'm gonna call it. I don't know really what to call this car because honestly, this is something that, this car, in my humble opinion, is something I would have thought you'd see as a concept and you'd never see again, you know, years ago. But here it is. This is a real vehicle you can buy today that definitely is going hard on the EV styling and really pushing the spaceship endeavor. If you didn't realize it's an EV, you know, by the name, it's the EV9, but it's electric vehicle. I'm gonna pop this guy open just to start showing you some features. And hopefully you'll understand what I mean when I say it's, it's definitely got that electric styling. These seats are completely, pardon the pun, out of this world. Um, the seats are very soft, they're very plush, and they are designed very differently than anything else in Kia's lineup. They have these mesh tops, beautiful styling all around. Now this does have a third row. If you wanna get back, there's a button here and also a button down there. You just press it, it's gonna slide it up. You're gonna access to the rear seats, which are still, I, I gotta say this, from, you know, back in 2012, 2013, when I was looking at Sorrento's and other cars, you know, for back then, like third row seats were not comfortable. <laughs> they were not, they were small, they were bad. This is a full size looking seat and it's still got plenty of cushion. I, you know, this is not a car I would be like mad to be sitting in a third row app. You have plenty of space back there. You got cup holders, you have cup holders on each side, plenty of little pockets. You got charging, USB-C, yeah. And then back here for the passengers as well, you also have a little moonroof up here. Plenty of sun as well. And then when you're all done, you just slide this back. Now this one, it locked in a little early. So I'm gonna press it and then you just send her back. Oh, it's a little heavy. I'm not gonna lie, this seat, this seat is beefy. Um, so it's a little bit heavy there. Additionally, for your passengers, you have two cup holders built in right here. But if you wanted more, you didn't need a third seat. You have two cup holders available there as well. Additionally, you do have pockets in these doors that are like plastic with these little um, elastic fold outs. You have a little pocket down there to do stuff with and you have USB charging on both of the seats. Additionally, something interesting, I'm gonna hop in here. On this seat, and I can't for the love of me figure out why, they put these here. So you're, you as sitting as the driver back here can just move the seat for them? Which to me is, is, is interesting. It's an interesting design choice. Back here as well, you have full climate control. And you have these very spacey looking vents. These are different than everything else in the Kia lineup. You spin it to turn it on and off and then you have the vents here now don't get me wrong don't get me confused when i say different than the lineup because there are other ones that have these ceiling vents but not this style or design additionally up top here you have a sunroof that can open and yeah and just before we hop into the front of the car just take a look at this cockpit i mean my goodness this is space age, if I've ever seen space age. Um, plenty of stuff going on here. Beautiful, interesting steering wheel, a massive touchscreen. Yeah, this is a car to look at, in my opinion. I'm gonna slide out here. I'm gonna show you the back, what it looks like with the seats up. You press the button, it is a power folding, or sorry, a power lift gate here. Additionally, in the back, you got plenty of storage space back here. What I have here, these are the floor mats that come with the car. And additionally, you have this little backpack. This backpack is your charging. Because obviously it's an electric car, it comes with a level one charger. Now, if we put these down, which you just pull the thing, you pull the thing, 
you pull the little rope guy here, and you have even more space. It's a lot of space. Additionally, if you need even more space, you have these buttons you can hit, and if I hit this button, it'll send those that seat down. I could actually send the other one down as well. Now you got tons of storage back here. And then when you're all done, press the button and you can send the back tailgate home. Let's jump into the car. Now, this is another point of contention for some people, and I don't think I showed you either. Let me grab the key fob here. Let me show you. So, when the car is unlocked, you can see these come out, and the way the car opens, you pull this out like that. When you lock the car, here, wait, let me see if I can show you this. When you lock the car, they slide in. And you have power folding mirrors as well. When you unlock the car, they open. Now, what is supposed to happen and what I've seen work is that if you lock the car and you walk far enough away and then you come back, as you walk up with the key fob in your hand, it will open. And if it doesn't, you just have to press on this little spot here as long as the key fob's there. That unlocks and unlocks, but that locks and unlocks the car. Now, Kia's claim they've done tons of tests with this particular feature to be able to make it so, you know, this works in the winter and when it's frozen out, so you should be good to go. Opening up, you have a full power seat here for your driver and for the passenger. Additionally, you have configurable, you have the lumbar support, everything's all right here for you. All of your heated and cooled area settings are right here. So you have heated seats, cooled seats, and a heated steering wheel. Additionally, down here, you have your fuel door stuff, you have your parking brake, um, you can open the frunk, which I'm gonna do here. Boom. Now the frunk is open. Now this frunk is not that large. I'm gonna be real with you, it is not that large. It is, um, on this particular model, you have it just opens right up with hydraulics. But you got space in here, you could throw a couple things if you wanted to. You can also replace your air vents and everything like that. So, yeah, a little bit of space in there. That just locks down just like that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and hop in this. I'm gonna go wide for this guy. Wow. Now, when you stop in here, you notice there's no shifter. There's nothing here on the on this area. So how do you start the car? Right down here, there's a button in there. It's right here on the turn side. I'm gonna switch hands, and I'm gonna. You put your foot on the brake, and you press the EV button. And now we are live. Obviously, it's an electric car. You don't hear an engine start. Car's like ready. We're good. We got miles. I'm going to show you a couple things here. So, as you turn the wheel, the wheels on the actual display show you where you're at, show where the wheels on the car is. You have your back seat indicator to see who's buckled, who's not. It tells you your charge, tells you what drive mode you're in, tells you your miles per hour. You're all good. Over here you have your regular cluster here. Sorry, regular cluster. You have your navigation. You have all your different Kia settings. And additionally, you have climate controls here as well. Now, in some of the other Kias, they don't put climate controls in here. So this definitely seems like a lot more of a seamless panorama. Whereas others, usually you have this piece, and then there's a blank spot, and then you have the tack. They've instead opted to put your climate controls right here in addition to down here here you can control your temperature you can control the fans but then up here is where you're going to be controlling all these different pieces um, for this so you have all these different pieces that you know you can set where do you want the fans to hit you know your fan speed do you want to recirculate air all that fun stuff so plenty of stuff going on there additionally you want to control your volume it's all there now these buttons i don't know if you're going to be able to hear this when you press these, these are touch sensitive, they're not physical buttons, but when you press it, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a haptic like kickback on every one of these. Again, I don't know if you can hear it, but because I have the mic facing me, but every time you press one of these, there's like a haptic feedback of, hey, you did press this. It's similar to haptic touch on iPhones if you're familiar with that down here you have some of your power options you have usb-c 
you have USB-C as well. One's for power, one's for your Apple CarPlay and all that. Nice little cavity back here to throw anything you need. And yeah, I mean, there's not a lot left. Up here, I mean, the steering wheel is gorgeous. I mean, it feels good in the hand. You can configure your drive mode to go from sport, snow, eco, normal, and then there's also my drive. Now, I made another video, which will probably be released either after this or right before it, which goes over a lot of the different settings in the EV9. In one of those settings is actually being able to set a custom drive mode where you can combine maybe like you want, you know, the normal steering performance, but you like you like the way it feels in normal mode for steering, but you want the sport engine. You can do that. It's a custom drive mode, uh, which is awesome. You also have four-wheel drive lock down here. All your cruise control settings are right over here, and all your call options are over here as well. And by pressing this button, you can go through all the different settings and options here in front of you. So that really is it for the EV9. It is a beautiful car. Has a lot, lot of cargo room, plenty to offer. And yeah, my only disappointment with this is that it doesn't have a taco holder or sunglass holder. It makes me a little upset. But otherwise, let me know what you think of the EV9. Is this a car you'd be interested in looking at? Is this a car you think is like kind of mid? You let me know in those comments down below and tell me what other cars you'd like me to check out in the future. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.